All right, so today, uh, this is uh, another copula topic. This one is uh, a very advanced topic, and um, not many people have been uh, using this method probably uh, because it scares a lot of people away. But uh, the thing for uh, most of the modeling from the first um, principle is that the math is the part that scares a lot of people away, but uh, the idea is pretty simple and straightforward. So it has great interpretability and the calculation is uh, really fast and usually they're pretty uh, resili resilient as well. So it's the same thing for uh, this method. So let's talk about uh, Vine copula. So first thing first, what does it do, right? So why do we want to talk about Vine copulas? It's already uh, looks super complicated for the copula itself. Why do we want to make it more complicated? Well, uh, if you noticed previously, I, were, uh, I was only talking about pairs trading because uh, a copula that we have talked before is a bivariate copula. It models um, two random variables. Here we're gonna model a cohort of random variables. So you're gonna find uh, mispricing informations among several different stocks. And uh, this kind of, inf kind of uh, information is usually quite difficult for a human brain to figure it out. Uh, and if there are some stats tools or uh, probability tools that can make you that can make use of this kind of information, then that would be great because that's just extra uh, edge that you have uh, over other type of uh, competitors or other traders. All right. And uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about four uh, different parts. Uh, those are the slide number. Those are not the uh, chapter number. I don't have 32 uh, chapters. So first one is a few basic math concepts. And then the second part is understand, understand uh, Vine copula. And you can see that this takes the most of the uh, chunk of the uh, presentation. That's because, again, if you understand uh, the math behind it, I will try to uh, make it as accessible as I can. Um, then you fully understand uh, what this method is about, right? Uh, and it has great interpretability as well. And then we're gonna talk about the trading strategy. Trading strategy is straightforward once you understand the uh, structure of the vine. And uh, the last one is uh, I'm gonna present some uh, interesting problems and open problems for people who has interest to do uh, further study uh, in this field. All right, so again, about me, uh, it's me again. I am a PhD candidate uh, in applied mathematics at the University of Delaware. My specialty is in stochastic modeling uh, with PDE methods. So a lot of PDEs, numerical PDEs and Asian-based modelings. And uh, I also do applied probability and copula modeling for statistical arbitrage and a little bit of uh, statistical control as well. I'm currently a researcher at Hudson Times and my LinkedIn and Twitter, you can find me uh, from, from here. Okay. okay, so key math concepts. Uh, back again, uh, we're gonna talk about copulas. So um, here we get data from two random variables, S1 and S2, all right? And the copula will link the, will link uh, S1 and, S and uh, S2 together by mapping to their quantiles, uh, uh, U1 and U2. So those are uh, in, the in, uh, in the value range between zero and one by using their marginal uh, cumulative density uh, functions. And then we calculate the cumulative density under quantiles. And then we denote that as uh, capital C, U1 and U2. And if you plot it, that's the first uh, picture. And if you plot the partial differ differentiation uh, of capital C against the U1 and then against the U2, you're gonna have the uh, copulas density uh, down here. So uh, before we dive into uh, Vine copula itself, let's do a very quick derivation on what we are actually doing. And you'll see those kind of notations uh, very often if you use Vine copulas. So uh, how do we compute uh, a generic, uh, how do we generically compute joint uh, probability density? So uh, P U1 and U2 is uh, P U1 given U2, right? So you assume U1 is true, you compute uh, the probability of, uh, you, can, you assume U2 is true, and then you compute the probability of U1, and then you multiply the probability of U2 happening, right? So this is very straightforward. It's just uh, inverse of the Bayesian rule, Bayes rule. And then uh, we still denote everything being the same, but we use slightly different notations. So F will be uh, the density, right? So the joint density of U1 and U2 is uh, one given two and multiplied by uh, F2. And there is another way to decompose this as well will be two given one and then U2, U1, right? So those are pretty straightforward. And uh, if we make it slightly more complicated, let's have uh, three random variables instead of just two. 
uh, you can decompose them in several different ways. All right, so uh, this is one of the way, this is another way, and there are four other ways. And if you just multiply them together, it should be relatively straightforward. It's just uh, use base rules uh, again, 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 and you're gonna have uh, this decomposition. Okay, so why, uh, why do we care about this? That's because uh, if we have the joint probability uh, density from the structure, right? And then we can com compute the uh, conditional cumulative density or the cumulative conditional uh, density by uh, integrating the, uh, by, inter by integrating the, sorry, it's flying everywhere by uh, integrating over the first component, right? So if, so if we want to calculate the cumulative density, we integrate over the uh, pointwise density and then uh, divide it by the, and then divide it by the, uh, and then normalize it by dividing over the, the full integration. Okay, so why is the conditional uh, density useful? Uh, this is a key component for statistical arbitrage. This will give you the relative mispricing uh, information and here it's in a much higher dimension. Previously, when we talked about the MPI strategies, it's just uh, PU1 uh, given U2. And here you have PU1 uh, given U2 and U3, and you can add U4, U5, uh, U6, as long as you know how to calculate the uh, joint probability density. Right. So key takeaway is you want to find the joint probability density. And uh, by having the joint probability density, you can calculate the cumulative conditional density. And if you have the cumulative conditional density, then you know whether a stock is overpriced or underpriced. So that's the key takeaway. And so the key here is how to actually calculate this thing, right? And the Vine Coppola can do it. Okay, so more mass formulas. Let's talk about uh, what's going on. So Coppola's density is the Coppola's definition taking differentiations in each of its components, all right? And then the joint density looks very similar, but slightly different. So here the U2 and U3, those are uh, quantile values and the X2, X3, they are the actual uh, margins. So here you use a, you use a CDF to map them to the, uh, to, map, to map the actual values into the quantiles. But if you want to calculate the joint density, you should be uh, taking differentiation against each actual, uh, each uh, actual marginal densities instead of uh, just uh, instead of just the quantiles. Okay, so joint density usually is denoted as uh, f, right? Small f two three, so x two x three here. And uh, if you calculate this by using uh, calculus, it's very straightforward. Uh, but you need to add the two. You need to multiply the two extra terms because of chain rule, right? So uh, small f two is capital F two differentiation. Right, and then you'll have this uh, result. And then you're gonna have the uh, conditional uh, density being calculated in this very specific way. All right, so how are those two related? So you can see that uh, two given three is two three divided by F3, right? And F23 is equal to the uh, copula multiplied with F2 times F3. So right now, if you cancel F3 out, you should have the copula multiplied uh, with F2. All right, so, so far so good. And so now let's try to understand uh, what is a bind copula. We're gonna use some of the results that we have just calculated, right? So now let's get slightly complicated. Assume that uh, it has this uh, one structure, all right? So F, X1, X2, X3 uh, can be decomposed uh, in this very specific way. You can decompose this in other ways uh, as well, but this is just one example, all right? And uh, here, this looks extremely complicated. But again, this is just telling you that every single thing can be computed. For example, F23 here, we have uh, talked about this example before, right? So it's just the copula two three multiplied by the, by, by the front, by uh, of the density to the front variable, all right? And uh, one, two, three is also the same as well. So if you decompose the one given two three and making three as the background information, then you can decompose this as a copula multiplied by the density. And then you can decompose further this density by a copula multiplied by a density, right? So this looks like a lot of things, but you can see that there uh, is some structure going on and we're gonna take advantage of that structure and that will give us the definition of a Von copula, right? Here, uh, a key important, a key thing is every single one of the uh, 
copulas, those are bivariate copulas. And bivariate copulas, there are a lot of uh, availability over there, and you can choose uh, whatever copula that uh, you find uh, necessary, right? So here, what you're essentially doing is uh, you decompose a higher dimensional uh, condition, you decompose the higher dimensional probability density into uh, bivariate copulas and the marginal densities. So this is a lot of work, uh, I know, but the key idea is to avoid using high dimensional copulas. You're still using bivariate copulas, but you couple it with the vine uh, structure, right? And uh, be very careful here uh, what this uh, F13x1 given X3 is, is the uh, cumulative density. So everything after the bar is equivalent and everything before the bar is greater than or is smaller than or equal to. I just be careful when you're actually coding this by yourself and when you are reading uh, those kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if we clean our notation up, uh, it will look like this. As you can see, there are very nice structures right here. So you have one, two, three, and two, three, one, three, and you have one, two, given uh, given three. So this is just one way to compose to decompose it. There's another way to, uh, to do it as well. But uh, here, let's just try to organize things and you will see the structure coming up. So you have one, two, three. So just write it to the right hand side, right? And you have two, three, one, three. So two, three, one, three, and you have one, two, three. Okay, so uh, so here, if you link uh, one, three, it will give, if you link the one, three from, uh, by a copula, it will give you this one, three. And if you uh, link the two, three, it will give you the two, three here. And if you uh, link one, three, and two, three, then the three becomes the background information. So you can condition uh, on three. So you will have uh, one, two, given three. So what does a vine copula do is it decomposes the higher dimensional dependency uh, by using bivariate copulas and also a graphical structure. So you can imagine the flexibility of this kind of modeling. You can have uh, a lot of things uh, going on <clears throat> uh, while uh, being able to model them uh, in a relative uh, precise manner. Okay, so what are some of the modeling advantages? Why do we want to spend our time to try to understand uh, the vine copula structure, right? So first thing is it's very flexible. So we have talked about this before. The higher dimensional copulas in general, they are very rigid because they assume a very rigid um, structures by giving the, uh, by having a closed form formula. All right, and I remember that uh, copulas previously are generally just used by mathematicians. In order to do further analysis, generally you need to start with something uh, simple uh, to be able to see what kind of structures that you can take advantage of. Instead of uh, starting with something that's really complicated, that's general, uh, not how math people work, right? And the second one is uh, its, interpret uh, it's, it's uh, interpretability. What this means is that uh, you can, visually see the connection between different nodes and uh, every, every um, let's see, every edge in the graph is a, uh, is a copula. And so therefore you can see what kind of structure the model is telling you. So this one is very, uh, it has great inter uh, interpretability. You can see what's going on. The third one is risk control. And uh, the tail risk is uh, very limited as pretty much with uh, the previous method, the MPI method. Usually if you use copulas for uh, pairs trading or for statistical arbitrage, uh, as long as your uh, training data is not too short uh, and it includes some of the uh, downturns in the market or upturns in the market, depends on uh, what you're looking for. Generally the tail risk, they model it pretty well. So you don't need to worry about uh, a lot of code movements happening at the same time, copulas can handle it. <clears throat> So there are a few structure types uh, in, the, uh, in the vine and uh, people use the R vine, right? And so for example, if you have seven uh, different, if you have seven different random variables, you should have six different edges and the graph should be uh, connected. That means starting from here, you should be able to uh, visit every single one, but uh, you can have only N minus one edges. So for example, here you have seven uh, random variables. You should have only six edges. Right, so if I connect four six here again, then it's not an R vine anymore. And you can see there are a lot of ways to make an R vine copula. And there are two very specific uh, uh, subgenres. Uh, one is called the C vine, and another is called the D vine. So C means canonical, and uh, I generally think the C means center because there is one center uh, copula, 
no, there is one center random variable that radius to every single other one. So it's called C by. And the D by is called uh, drawable, but I generally think D as uh, D for driveway because you can drive and visit every one uh, of your friend's houses, like uh, like in a neighborhood. So this is how I think about it. <coughs> okay, so C by notation. This one is important if you want to code the uh, module by itself because uh, you need to take advantage of some of the structures. And the C vine can be uh, is a bijection map uh, with an other tuple. So uh, if you read it backwards, four, two, three, one, this means uh, it's the center for each level of the tree, right? So for example, the first one, the center is four, and because it's the center, and you're using a C vine, so everyone should be connected with it. And you see what what the connection is. Uh, you have two four, you have one four, you have three four. So you write down one four, two four, three four here. And then you read uh, the second one, you have the center to be two and four, right? So two and four should be the center, it connects everyone and so on and so forth, right? Uh, generally an R vine uh, notation will look uh, a lot more complicated than this. It will become a uh, it will become a upper triangular matrix. And uh, if I want to spend time on that, that's another at least 10 minutes gone. So we're only gonna talk about the C vine notations for today's purpose. And uh, you're only gonna use C vine. Uh, C vine, you're only going to use the C vine structure for uh, statistical arbitrage as of now. <clears throat> okay, so now let's talk about the workflow. Uh, how do we actually use it? So the first thing is uh, you need to get hands on the data, right? So what kind of data do you need? You need to have the raw data by themselves. You need to have the marginal uh, cumulative density function, and you need to change uh, the data uh, into the pseudo observations or the quantiles data by uh, applying the marginals to the data, right? So therefore you're gonna have results uh, between zero and one. And our calculus, they work with quantiles. So you should always uh, use the pseudo observations. And here we assume we're only uh, dealing with four uh, financial products or four stocks. And the second one is we need to figure out the vine structure, right? So which structure best describes the current relation between the four, right? Uh, you can do this by hand, uh, but it's gonna be extremely complicated. Uh, there are a lot of ad hoc ways to do it. But uh, as of now, you can assume that your computer uh, can handle this uh, because this is another topic if I want to dive into it's two hours gone. All right, so assume that by some magic, your computer can figure out what's the best uh, structure for the C line copula, right? And the third one is we want to calculate the uh, density. Again, we have said before, this one is the key. Right, because if you can calculate the point density, then you can calculate uh, cumulative density. And if you know the cumulative density, you know if the prices are mispriced or not. Right, and here it's just uh, F1234, and then you can see you have a 3, 4, you have a 2, 3, you have 1, 3. So all of those uh, edges, all of those connections between the different nodes, those are uh, bivariate copulas. And if you're going to fit them, you need to figure out which copula it is, uh, what's the uh, copulous variables, uh, what are their parameters, what are their weights, right? So the, the, this, there are uh, automatic algorithms that can, that can uh, apply to uh, in, this, uh, in this part. So you don't need to worry about uh, that, how are those found? Just know that uh, this kind of thing exists. And then you need to multiply the second level of the tree and to multiply by the third level of the tree. So all of those can be calculated. And then you need to calculate the uh, conditional probability all right, by cumulatively uh, adding, by cumulatively adding uh, the target stock up. All right, so here you need, to, you need to do one transformation. So previously you're calculating the uh, actual density, right? Here you need to calculate the density on the uh, on the quantiles, not their actual uh, margins, and also you need to divide by the normalization to be able to find the HC. And notice that uh, this conditional probability or the cumulative uh, conditional probability is model dependent. Uh, it depends on what kind of copula that you throw in, depends on what kind of vine structure you throw in, right? And then you generate the signals. That's the last part. So if HC is greater than 0 0.5, that means uh, U1 is overpriced. If HC is smaller than 0 0.5, that means uh, stock one is underpriced. And then you trade based on those uh, informations. Okay, so now uh, this brings us to the uh, trading strategy. So how is this gonna work? Uh, again, it looks really complicated, but trading is a lot easier than figuring out the copulous uh, vine structure if you just follow uh, someone else's advices. 
All right, so the first one is you need to do some pair selection. Again, as you can see over here, the pair selection, uh, it's still really, uh, relatively uh, primitive. So they use Spearman's row, they use the generalized uh, Spearman's row, they use the geometric distances to diagonal on the QQ plot. So that tells you how uh, discontributive they are. And the fourth one is uh, extreme approach. So this is a test on whether uh, random variables are uh, independent. So therefore, if you flip the test, that will, that will tell you what random variables are dependent. And you use the dependent pairs uh, or the dependent stocks to form a cohort. And then you choose uh, four stocks from the top 20 stocks. Uh, the 20 stocks are chosen from the S&P 500. And then uh, you make trades based on the four uh, stocks there. And there are a lot of four stocks that you can choose from the 20, from the uh, top 20 stocks. And, um, and there are some further uh, readouts of the candidates as well, but that's a little bit more complicated and I don't wanna dive it in right now. You can uh, read the original paper and see uh, how they're doing it. Okay, and then they assume that uh, every copula they assume that the copula that they want to deal with uh, is a C vine structure. So they impose a C vine structure and uh, try to try, try to select it automatically. So there are algorithms that can do this. Uh, you don't need to worry about how uh, each one is, uh, is, is selected. Just assume that by some magic, they can weed out uh, other type of uh, C vine structures. <clears throat> And they also use the data on the returns. They don't directly work on the prices. So it's again, the CMPI strategy. Uh, CMPI strategy, we have talked about it before. It's a nice building block for much more complicated uh, projects, uh, something like this. And they also used a uh, Bollinger Band as well. <clears throat> and then at the last, they're trading against uh, SPY index and also the make a dollar neutral. So again, those are all the components that we have seen before. So why do they trade against S&P 500 index? That's because uh, it's cheaper than uh, long and short individual stocks and also some other uh, author, they have used this method as well. So uh, this is tested to be a reasonably uh, good practice. And you can see the performance. So here the VStrat is the Vine copula, right? So the data ranges from 1992 to 2015 and it just blows through the roof. It's really, really promising kind of strategy. And the, the T-strat and G-strat, those are multivariate Gaussian and multivariate T-distributions to generate data from those. So they're assuming that uh, they have uh, multivariate Gaussian and multivariate T-distribution type of structures and uh, signals are generated from them. And the, the last one is the benchmark, assuming every stock that it shows uh, are independent. So you can see this one doesn't make any money because the assumption is wrong. <coughs> Okay, so uh, what kind of functionalities we have in our module? So this one is still under development and should be out uh, in about one or two weeks uh, on my side and should be rolled out uh, if we're lucky um, in the uh, next rollout pretty soon or something like that. So what we have finished is we can automatically fit uh, the C vine structure. And uh, also you can generate positions uh, for the target stock from a Bollinger Band. So those are the key parts. Um, those are the key parts that are uh, already finished. Those are the core of the strategy. And then you can translate positions as units against the index. So again, uh, they will tell you how much to long, how much to short at the end of the day, right? And then uh, we're working on uh, automatic uh, R-Vine fit. So the author only used the C-Vine, but there's nothing stopping people from using uh, R-Vine, right? So we're working on this, how to automatically fit an R-Vine copula. This one is very mathematically uh, interesting. So if you are more math oriented, uh, you can check this out. It's uh, really interesting how these algorithms are uh, generated. It's a much more advanced version of uh, a simple expectation and maximization in multiple different steps. And uh, then it has uh, sl stocks uh, selection criterions. So uh, we're just gonna implement the four uh, different methods proposed by the author. And a uh, quick word is that uh, the Last one, the extreme approach is the one that looks uh, the most uh, promising. And uh, the stocks selected by the fourth one has a uh, much better performance uh, than one, two, and three. And one, two, and three, their performance are very similar. So you might be able to use this for uh, other type of uh, applications. And then speed optimizations. Right now, this is still relatively slow. Although the lower level code is wrapped in C++, but it's still pretty slow. And there are some of the places that we can optimize this 
to make those faster by using either Numba or by taking advantage of some uh, multi-processing uh, capabilities. So uh, there are a lot of things that we can do, that, uh, that we can use to, to be able to do this. Right, so some of the possible issues, again, because it uses the Bollinger Band, it still suffers from the issue that it exits a bit too early. So some research uh, needs to be done over here on um, try to make it exiting at the right time. Right, so uh, the second one is the, perform the performance. They seem only significant on uh, stock groups. So if you just randomly pick four different stocks from S&P 500 and then use the uh, Vine copula on it, uh, they generally don't have very good performances. And uh, it's not very clear to me why they can't have very good performances, uh, but uh, from the data that uh, the performance is just not as good when you uh, have a previous uh, filter uh, by uh, doing the pair selection. And the third one is computation time. We talked about this before, it's relatively slow. So in figuring out the buying structure right now, it takes about 20 seconds if you put in uh, three years uh, worth of data. <clears throat> Okay, so some of the interesting problems that uh, we or you can choose to work on, a lot of them, right? So I'm gonna talk about some of the most important stock selection, that's extremely important. Term structures, so we have talked about this before, right? So how do you incorporate time series natively with Copula and optimal exiting time, uh, R-line fit and higher frequency data? Because uh, if you use intraday data, then returns doesn't make any sense anymore. So you need to find ways to adapt to higher frequency data. And there are some papers uh, using Vine Coppola for statistical arbitrage with high, uh, high, frequency, uh, high frequency trading. So that's something that uh, if you're interested, you can look into that direction as well. And also alternative data, this is very important here uh, because we're talking about uh, multiple dimensions, right? So instead of using four stocks, you can use maybe three stocks and one uh, alternative data from uh, some other uh, information like micro, uh, macroeconomics data or the company's data or uh, other stuff like that, right? So there are a lot of structures to be um, exploited if you use alternative data. So those are uh, my talk uh, today. So any questions that I can answer? <clears throat> 